so it's been a while and I want to hop on here and give a life update video and also what I plan to do with my YouTube channel before I start just posting again. So let's start with a life update. Back in December 2019 slash January 2021, 2020, not 2021, um, my husband was within talks at Disney and almost got his dream job um, and that would have left results in us moving to California. So we were prepping for the very real possibility of moving across the country and leaving Milwaukee where we've been living for the past seven years. And as you may remember, then there was a pandemic. The world shut down and everything was turned upside down for better or for worse. And, you know, in the long run for my husband and I, personally, it's been for the better. <laughs> um, with the pandemic, the opportunity for a stream job was taken away because Disney went to a hiring freeze. And the jobs that we both were working at that time uh, were no longer there. My job, which was just a retail job at the time, uh, was just was shut down for the foreseeable future and the job he had at the time he quit because the company was not taking literally any safety precautions with COVID and my husband's like I'm not being paid enough to risk my life so or anyone else's life so there were jobless no job in the horizon there's a global pandemic I start making countless masks because it's what in my skills that my background's in fashion so i'm like you know it's what i can do to help in this time and i think within a month of me making masks i made a few hundred so for the first chunk of like the whole time the world was collectively in lockdown i was just sewing for hours a day my husband was helping me and but with all that, our apartment lease was going to be up and we're like, we don't know if we might be moving across the country still. We don't know if we're staying here. We just, there's a lot of, we didn't know what's going on and we didn't want to renew our lease just to find out that we were going to be moving suddenly and have to break lease and pay all that money. So my parents came to me and they're like, well, Opa, uh, my dad's dad, he, his house has been empty for four months. Opa moved into an old folks home because Opa had a surgery, rested in an old folks home, turned out he loved it there, didn't want to leave. So his house was just vacant. And my parents were like, if you're willing to clear it out because all the stuff was still there and um, uh, you know, do the work because you know the house was built in the 50s. Last time I worked, it was done on this house was in the 1980s when my Oma was still alive. They're like, if you're willing to do the work, we will give you a very good deal for rent and you will have no lease, so if you do need to move suddenly, you can and not have to worry about breaking a lease. So we're like, okay, great. We're, we'll take that option because we didn't know what else we were going to do. And we're eternally thankful for it. Um, all that happens. And then, uh, so that was like March through May, we were emptying the house and moving into it. And we've been working on the house ever since. Um, then let's fast forward to summer 2021. I, uh, night before my husband and I go on a road trip to New Mexico with my husband's parents. Uh, my husband and I go out to dinner with my parents for their anniversary. And that's where my mom tells me that my dad might have Parkinson's. And that, that, that changed a lot of things for us because you know, I only got my dad, one dad. <laughs> And, you know, my husband talked about, you know, like if for whatever reason, because since he was still in the hiring freeze, they reached out. My husband's like, I would turn down the job because your dad has health problems. It's not looking good. Let's be here with your dad. And then we, while we were on that Santa Fe trip, I wanted to meet these uh, hat makers in shops in Santa Fe. There's two custom hat shops. They both make beautiful work. I have a hat from each of them now. I'd like to thank my in-laws for the kind gift. Um, but the both time I was talking to them, they both want to hire me on the spot and they're willing to like do competitive pay, outbid each other to hire me because they knew the other one wanted me. 
and that kind of like gave me the confidence like I can continue my dream of hat making I I really loved it um before everything I'm talking about now I was a milliner apprentice for a year in Milwaukee and had to quit that job for a number of reasons and it breaks my heart because I loved that job and I found the thing that like lit the fire and like was my passion because I've always had a passion for historical and the craftsmanship and artisan of fashion and I feel like so many people don't understand that and I feel like in the hat making world where people get it so it just hats themselves has such a personality and all kinds of people wear them it's just I could get a whole thing about hats but point being the, I found out I could still do this as a career people still want to hire me and you know I was flattered and I did consider for a moment but I was like between my dad's health and other parts there's nothing in my husband's field other way she looked online there's nothing in a three-hour radius of that area in my husband's field we're like we can't move out there those are two big reasons why we can't but it made me really excited like I could do this like this could happen so I was already like low-key thinking about it in lockdown since um my opus house is in my hometown in Illinois if you not everyone knows this I've realized so there's Chicago and the hour radius around it is the Chicago land or Chicago area that's where my husband and I grew up and then beyond that that's just Illinois those are three very different places do not conflict them as all the same thing <laughs> um so we moved back to the Chicago area and I was like you know Optimo's in Chicago and Optimo is the number one hat maker in the country their stuff is flawless it is perfection it is it's just stunning work and it's actually down in the loop and I was like you know when we get back from this I was already dabbling with the idea I'm going to reach out to them and see if they are, would like to hire me and I did that I went down to the store with my friend Aries thank you for the support <laughs> um and I talked to them and I talked to the manager and he's like shoot we are hiring I was so excited I was so happy and you know the summer goes on he's like you know we'll give you an interview once the owner gets back he's on town right now I'm like that's perfectly fine I'm willing to wait owner gets back in town interview set up I am never been this nervous in my life it was like going on a date with someone you've been looking forward to like that kind of nervousness and I hit horrible traffic on the way to the interview so now I'm panicking I'm running late I let them know like hey I'm running late this and that and I am just a bag of nerves I get there I because I drove to a train station and went, took a train there. I get off the the blue line. I walk up. I am out of breath. I am red in the face. I'm wheezing. And they're there at the top of the station. I'm like, hi. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. I have had no time to collect myself. I am a bag of nerves. Long story short, worst job interview I think I've done of my life. And I had a feeling in my gut I didn't get the job. And I was like, oh. And I felt so crushed. Follow that. Do... Um, I also run a shop at the Renaissance Fair. I had probably the worst closing weekend of my life. And the interview was Thursday. I worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then Monday after fair closed, I went on a week-long trip with friends for my 30th birthday to Disney World. And the whole time, I mean, just like this gut feeling like, like this was a bad interview. I didn't get the job. I know it in my gut. And I get back from the trip and they never got back to me. And I reach out to them and they email me back and they're like, as of this time, we're not hiring anyone. It's not anything against you personally. Due to COVID, we're just having cold feet hiring right now, which I get that. That is all valid. But I was gut punched. <laughs> I became so depressed for months. And I should probably rewind. Throughout that summer, I found out my dad did not have Parkinson's. He actually had had three small strokes when I found out during the summer, I was working for my parents and my mom calls me, I'll call my mom about something and she, she answers the phone hysterical saying my dad's having a stroke, she's driving to the hospital. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm in the boonies of Illinois with a van full of plants. My parents are the landscaping business. And dad's having a stroke. So I'm like having to like mentally keep it together. I get home, all that. It was actually a good thing. It was, we found out his third small stroke and we found out the kind of strokes he was having was causing him to have Parkinson's symptoms so my dad did not have parkinson's he was just having parkinson's symptoms due to these strokes that we weren't catching till that one we so we were there for to catch or my mom and one of the my parents employees were there to catch and so i had all that going on this summer this whole trim hat shop 
thing, my dad's health, it was a roller coaster, but you know, every time I asked him to talk about it, it just solidified more like, I was just like, your dream job is here in Chicago. Your dad with his health issues is here in Illinois. We need to stay in this area. We're not gonna move to California now. And that's what we kept agreeing to. And then I, like I said, circle, circle back to, I didn't get my dream job. I'm horribly depressed. Like, um, it's kind of like those people who would like imagine their whole life together on the first date and then you find out they're like no and you're like shattered you're like i imagined our us growing old together i think you know like I, it's the best metaphor i can come up with but it's like how i felt this job like i envisioned this was gonna be the rest of my life i was gonna have my passion my husband are gonna settle down in the chicago area we're gonna have you know have a life and it was just everything i wanted and they just all shattered and with all this my husband just a few months after this my husband finally heard back from disney because they unhiring freeze and like you know what we actually decided to go with someone else with this year's weight on this whole thing and so he's now gut punch we're both shattered heartbroken didn't get dream job my dad's health isn't doing well and with all this two things come to light for myself personally one is i was talking to my mom i was like you know for years, I have had low key in the back of my mind as a plan B career of being a travel agent because I'm very good at planning. I'm a very organized person. I I love planning, to be honest. <laughs> I, it's just something that makes me happier than like planning stuff. And I already have had numerous people come up to me over the years and plan vacations for them. So why am I, why am I not being paid for this? And she's like, I'm all in, let's do it together. So that's how my mom and I started a travel agency called Acorn and Thimble Travel. So hit us up if you want a trip. Um, but also at the same time, I was thinking, I was like, this is a great side hustle. This is a great thing. It's one of the reasons I wanted to do a travel agency is like when my husband and I do have kids one day, this is something I can do working from home and still be home with kids and not have to worry about things. So, but I still wasn't giving my dream on that hat shop. Optimo was haunting me, like just thinking about it all the time every waking moment of my life <laughs> um and you know I was sitting there I was just so depressed and so heartbroken and feeling so endless my husband didn't get his dream job we both are just feeling lost and I'm like what's stopping me like what is stopping me from this I'm like all right let me think about all the things because I've had a few different career situations not ones I want as bad as optimal but what really frustrates me is like I met literally everything Optimo is uh, per, like what they were looking for checklist and just like, and I've had other fashion jobs like this in my field where I have met everything on their checklist. I would have done it. Such a great job. One was an online sale, stylist job right before a lockdown. One was uh, a custom suits salesman in uh, the heart of Chicago. It's actually like right next to Optimo. But like, I am really good at this. Every job I've had, I've been the number one salesman. Every job I've had, I've broke company sales records for sales in a day. Like, and they just don't hire me for one reason or another. And one of the most common things is like, you don't have a college degree because I did drop out of college a long time ago. It's like, you don't have certain skills when it comes to the making of things. And I'm like, I'm willing to be learn. I'm willing to learn and train. And they're like, well, you would learn this in college and just keep swimming back, circling back to this. And I was like, I'm tired of having this glass ceiling stopping me from getting my dream job. I'm sick of it. So I just buckled down and I really researched colleges within commuting range of where we live. Because once again, I don't want to be far from my dad. We actually live 10 minutes from my parents right now. And, you know, I spent time researching colleges and between Chicago area and Milwaukee area. And I found, I need to just like look at like, which schools had a fashion program and fiber program, but what specifically, or costume program, what specifically classes were they offering? What kind of techniques were they going to teach you? Because so many colleges are going to train you to be what I call a pattern monkey, which, or some people in the industry call it, which basically you are there to create patterns or something that's trending to sell a fast fashion store. You're not there actually to design, you're just there to make stuff to get it out you're not there to actually it's not about the artisanship it's not about the craftsmanship it's not about the the history of it it's just fast fashion and i have absolutely no interest to ever do that so i 
research schools and I was like, I want a school that's going to be about the history of garments, about the quality, the handmade goods. And because if I don't get, end up getting a job like Optimo, it doesn't have to be hats, but something along those lines, I would like to go into fashion history in one way or another. So those are true directions I'd like to go with, with my degree. And I researched colleges, I visited colleges, I looked at their specific classes, I talked to their departments, I talked to teachers, and I found School of the Art Institute of Chicago. So I fell in love with SAIC when I visited the campus. I got to see like, yes, this is what I want to learn. This is what I'm looking for. So many colleges are like, like Columbia is, is fine. It's just not what I want to do with my degree and that the direction I want to do with it. So, and it's like finding something along those lines. And then when I found SAIC, I'm like, it's perfect. So I rushed to meet the fall deadline and I, get a letter in the mail and I didn't know what to expect because my portfolio reviews all went really well they're like the fact that you've done hats and baskets and clothing and they have like some clothing for sale on this one renaissance clothing website that you work for like this is great we love it and then but my other concern is my GPA was terrible because when I dropped out of school many years ago I was not okay and my GP reflected that so I didn't know what to expect and I got the most confusing clutter in the mail they're like you're not in but you're not rejected <laughs> and I'm just like what <laughs> and basically I had to do one semester of 12 credits at a community college so I did the one where I actually went back to the community college where I met my husband 10 years ago um and did a semester of 12 credits and they said here's a list of classes you can pick from because these are the ones who transfer in um and if you get a C or higher in all the classes you're automatically and no questions asked and I was just like what <laughs> so that's what I just did this past fall I did that I went to SIC They're like yeah you're in I had even got a scholarship which I wasn't expecting because I raised my GPA so high um, I got two A's and two B's this semester. I'm very proud of myself. And I start going to SIC in like, I believe two weeks from today. <laughs> and I, and I'm just so like, what is happening? And I am excited and eager to sink my teeth into, you know, continue my passion for the artisan of fashion, but also the craftsmanship and the history and also just like, let's move to make fashion sustainable in such a way that when you invest money in a well-made item and I know not everyone can and I'm not saying you're a bad person if all you can afford is fast fashion I want to be clear on that I just want to say I'm just so excited that it's happening and just like a month and a half ago with all this going on my husband got his other dream job he's going to be working for a company which is also with a man I was friends with back in high school who's just moved back into the area and we're both so excited we're both to be like you know continue this friendship but also get to do a dream job he cares about he's doing environmental work with his degree and he's so happy and he's so excited I can't wait to start work so you know it's been a rough few years but it's finally coming to a point where like I'm just I'm, instead of wanting to cr feel like I'm about to cry from being feeling like the world is just too much I feel now I feel like I'm going to cry just when I'm so, so overwhelmed and happy and feel like things are finally working out and with all that and the last update with my dad is we actually found it recently he now is having heart problems so this between SIC and my husband's job and my dad's health I'm definitely staying here in Illinois we are not moving to California anytime soon my husband and I have to decide for our short long-term future, if that makes any sense, for like the next few years. We're planning to move to Chicago, so we're near, still nearby my dad and my mom. My dad for his health, my mom because of our travel agency. We still have, yeah, I'm still doing that. I'm working that job with everything else. And also because a lot of career options for myself that I'm interested in pursuing are in Chicago outside of Opto, but also like I would love if I could intern there or end up getting the job there. I think I'd probably just need to be pinched or something. It, it did work out in the end. Um, 
so yeah, it's been a lot, <laughs> a lot to update about, but I'm happy to share that with you. And I really hope you're interested in continuing the journey with me because the other part of all this, the other part of all this is what I plan to do with YouTube. So initially during lockdown, I decide I was going to do fashion history and fashion education videos. And my wonderful friend Jay, she's like, yeah, I'll type up the scripts for you. That's great because I asked her and she's a writer. And I was like, I did all the research. If you can make it into a script, that'd be great. And she typed up a script for the history of Doc Martens for me and I filmed it and it was so bad. I was so stiff and robotic and uncomfortable and awkward. I can only do videos when it's like this where I don't really have a script and I'm just flowing. <laughs> if I'm just going relaxed, there's nothing that's so rigid. And I've been thinking really hard because I still want to put that kind of content out there. And I've decided what I'm going to do is start doing blog posts. I'm still going to do the research and Jay's still going to do the writing for me, but I'll be putting out blog posts for fashion history and fashion education. Now for the YouTube half, I love YouTube or TikTok videos where it's just like, day in the life or a haul or you know uh, a trip with somewhere or a cleaning god I love a good cleaning video <laughs> so here it's just basically what I'm going to feel like it may be like product reviews or a day in the life with me vlog or you know uh, a trip so basically it's going to be more of just a relaxed lifestyle to put loosely channel um and I'm sure I'll be putting other stuff out there too. Like I plan to do some travel agency related videos or some like, you know, haul reviews for like clothing or makeup. But yeah, that's my plan. You can follow me on TikTok or Instagram or here. Um, I'd appreciate it. But yeah, I'm, I'm back. Things are going to be okay. And uh, I hope you like everything that's about to come along with. I know... Uh, I leave on Tuesday for a trip to Disney World. We're actually going for my friend Jade's 30th birthday. She's never been to Disney World. My husband I promised her years ago we'd take her for her 30th. Um, and I think I'm just going to plan to vlog the Animal Kingdom Day to test the waters. Because like the past like four Disney trips, I'm like, I'm going to vlog a Disney trip. And that doesn't happen. So I'm like, I'm just starting simple. And I think I'm going to do my next video is just like 50 facts about me or something like that. But yeah, it's going to be come over here, have a chill, relaxed time <laughs> or fun, whatever you want. But one of the other things I want to do for videos, and I'm still debating on how much I will share, is I want to share certain life experiences just to let people know you're not alone in these things because I have dealt with a lot of dark days of depression, anxiety throughout my entire life, not just these recent years of everything I just talked about. And I often feel like if I shared a lot of these experiences, I talked to my therapist about this, that if I've known someone out here who've been through these things, I probably wouldn't feel so ashamed to share it because if someone else is out there then I'm not such a whatever, you know, I'm trying to say, so no matter what video I do, no, I will not allow any unkind comments that will be deleted. I don't tolerate that no matter if it's at me or someone else, but I just want to let you know that you're not alone out there, whether you have anxiety or depression like I do, or you're neurodivergent like me. I have had ADHD and auditory processing disorder and autism and dyslexia and I used to have epileptic seizures and speech in my brain my entire life. So I like to share these experiences with you and let you know you're not so alone. So that's my plan and those that's going to be my YouTube in life and I hope I hope you like the journey we're about to go on <laughs> or whatever. <laughs>